Welcome to Inside the Booth. I'm David Arena, and this is the final chapter to 1 John. Let's get going. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has become a child of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves his children too. We know we love God's children if we love God and obey his commandments. Loving God means keeping his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For every child of God defeats this evil world, and we achieve this victory through our faith. And who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And Jesus Christ was revealed as God's Son by his baptism in water and by shedding his blood on the cross. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And the Spirit, who is truth, confirms it with his testimony. So we have these three witnesses, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And all three agree. Since we believe human testimony, surely we can believe the greater testimony that comes from God, and God has testified about his Son. All who believe in the Son of God know in their hearts that this testimony is true. Those who don't believe this are actually calling God a liar because they don't believe what God has testified about his Son. And this is what God has testified. He has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have God's Son does not have life. I have written these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know you have eternal life. And we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. Since we know he hears us, when we make our requests, we also know that he will give us what we ask for. If we see a Christian brother or sister sinning in a way that does not lead to death, you should pray, and God will give that person life. But there is a sin that leads to death. And I'm not saying you should pray for those who commit it. All wicked actions are, in, are sin, but not every sin leads to death. We know that God's children do not make a practice of sinning, for God's Son holds them securely, and the evil one cannot touch them. We know that we are children of God, and that the world around us is under the control of the evil one. And we know that the Son of God has come and he has given us understanding so that we can know the true God. And we live in fellowship with the true God because we live in fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ. He's the only true God and he is eternal life. Out of this chapter, I have three things that I feel God leading me to touch on. And the first part of it is Verses 4 and 5. God's children will always have victory. God's children will always have victory. Verse 4 and 5 says, For every child of God defeats this evil world, and we achieve this victory through our faith. And who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. We achieve all our victories through our faith in Christ Jesus. Any one of us who believes that Jesus is the Son of God will always have victory. Now, at first, it may seem like you never get any victory because life is throwing you curveballs every day and you're getting beat up every day. But remember what Romans 8.37 says. It says, But in all these things we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. Do you hear that? Do you hear that, brothers and sisters? We overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. Again, love is the key. So we need to know our identity if we're going to have victory. If you don't know that you are a child of God, that's a problem. If you say that you follow Jesus, but you really don't know if God loves you, or if you don't know that you are loved, 
you need to start changing the way you think. You got to retrain your brain. You got to think of yourself every day. I am loved. I am accepted. I am approved by God. And His love allows me to overcome everything in this life. Those who believe in Jesus as the Son of God will have victory through our faith here in this earth while we are alive. Doesn't matter what comes our way, we will have victory. So remember, be encouraged, children of God. You will have victory in this life. Even though you may not feel it right now, you will have victory. Does God the Father hear your prayers? Sometimes we ask ourselves, does God really hear me when I pray? Does he even know I exist sometimes with all the stuff we're going through? And you know, I just said a moment ago that you have victory in this life. But you wonder, do I really have victory? Does God even hear me? So verse 12 through 15 says, Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have God's Son does not have life. I have written this to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know you have eternal life. And we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask anything that pleases him. Verse 15, And since we know he hears us when we make our requests, we also know that he will give us what we ask for. So, child of God, does your Heavenly Father hear you? Does Abba Daddy hear you when you talk to Him? The answer is yes. He does hear you as long as you are His child. Not everyone is a child of God because not everyone believes in Jesus. Even though not everyone is a child of God, everyone is created in God's image. So does God hear you? Well, ask yourself, am I a child of God? Do I believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he died on the cross and rose again on the third day and he shed his blood for me? If you are a child of God, then yes, he does hear you. And whatever you ask for that pleases him, he will answer. It's that simple. He always answers us. Now, not everybody is a child of God. But it doesn't mean we don't honor. I need to bring this up because we have a tendency to not honor people as believers because they're not God's children. They don't do what I do. But every single one of us, even though they not, may not be a child of the living God, because they don't believe that Jesus is God the Son, we still need to honor human life. Because everyone is created in God's image. When you look at another person, you're looking at what God has created. You, you're looking at Him in a way. The only reason why we don't see each other that way is because we're tainted with sin. And we're selfish and self-centered at times. But God created all human beings in His image. Therefore, we must honor each other. And especially the more those who are the children of God, we need to honor one another even more so because the same Spirit of God that lives in me, dwells in me, also lives and dwells in you. So, we may not agree on everything, but the same Spirit of God that lives in me also lives in you, and therefore we must honor each other. One last thing, and that is humans, human beings, we all are difficult at times, but honoring each other and honoring those outside of the family of God in spite of their sin and lifestyle. We're not going to condone sin 
We're not going to condone a lifestyle that is disobedient to God. But we still need to honor them because they are created in God's image and respect them as human beings. Remember, this whole book that we've been going through is about love. And love is the commandment that Jesus gave us. He said, love God and love people. Love your neighbor as yourself. These are the two great commandments. So if you really love God, you're going to love and honor people. It's just that simple. Do you want to become a child of God? Do you want to recommit your heart to Jesus? Verse 18 through 21 says, We know that God's children do not make a practice of sinning, for God's Son holds them securely, and the evil one cannot touch them. We know that we are children of God, and that the world around us is under the control of the evil one. And we know that the Son of God has come, and He has given us understanding, so that we can know the, the true God. And now we live in fellowship with the true God because we live in fellowship with His Son, Jesus Christ. He is the only true God, and He is eternal life. Dear children, keep away from anything that might take God's place in your hearts. Well, I want to close this five-week study or devotional. It's more like a devotional. I want to close this five-week devotional with this. A chance for all my viewers to recommit their hearts to Jesus or give their lives to Jesus for the first time. It's really easy. You know, I've been talking about being children of God, knowing your identity. I've talked a lot about love, the love of the Father, the love of the Son, the love that we're to have for each other. But none of this is even possible if we don't live our lives to the fullest in Jesus. If we don't give our hearts to Christ, none of this is even possible. So, I want to give this opportunity to those who are watching, to those who may be listening. This is an opportunity for you to recommit your heart to Jesus or give your life to Jesus for the first time and say, I'm going all in to follow Christ. All in. Now, I don't want you to, you know, just say a prayer because I will lead you in a prayer, but I don't want you to just say a prayer and that's it. I'm going to challenge you to find a local church that you can start attending. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him will not perish but have eternal life. If you want eternal life, if you want security of where you're going to go after you die, because there is a heaven and there is a hell, and those who are without Christ will end in hell. But those who receive Jesus' forgiveness will end up in heaven with the Son and the Father and the Holy Spirit. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I ask you now to be Lord of my life. I believe you lived on this earth. I believe that you came and died, not just for my sins, but also to take away the shame and the guilt of my sins. And I believe that when you were in the grave, on the third day, you rose again. Lord, I believe in you. I ask for your forgiveness of all my sins and 
all the things I have done that are evil in your sight. Renew my mind today. Give me new life. Give me new identity. I want to be a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer with sincerity of your heart, I want you to know you are saved and born again. And if this is a recommitment, you need to understand you are a child of God. And if you said this for the first time, you have just now entered into the kingdom of heaven. You went from darkness to light. You are a child of God today. And that is it. The book of 1 John is done. Thanks for watching. Please, if this is your first time, subscribe. If you're a recurring subscriber, please share this with your friends. Share the channel with your friends. Let as many people know about Inside the Booth. God is doing some really great things with this channel and with my brother and I. So we just thank you for your support. And may the Lord bless you guys in the year 2020.